big herd. It's a crazy weekend. Okay, yeah, Saturday. So it's, uh, up to LaSalle and then toward 41 North. What's that? 41 North? Yeah. Oh, that's the uh, Lake Shore Drive. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then it's exit onto North Sheridan. It's a right on North Sheridan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. We'll do that. We'll do that. Mr. Singer! What's up? How are you? <laughs> oh, well, technology, what dude. technology? Did you, when you started, like, they never had shit like this, right? No, dude. You had like a, uh, you had like a court, uh, court artist, uh, a courtroom artist who would maybe sketch you and be like, <laughs> these people are telling jokes with words. Check him out. Yeah, you see, like, your thing would have to be, like, in a newspaper or a magazine for people to find out. Yeah, well, to be fair, it was 2002, so, you know, the internet was a thing. MySpace mm -hmm. was, uh, was making people big. You were in MySpace? I was in MySpace. You were friends oh. with Tao? Oh, uh, dude, I was, I had a music, I had a MySpace performer, I had a comedian page on MySpace. Okay. Um, gosh, I, uh, like My, comedians, I think like they say Dane Cook was one of the first people to utilize. He blew it up. Um, yeah, I mean he, he's the one who, yeah, he's the guy who used social media to become famous and huge, for sure. Hmm. He definitely did that somehow. I don't know how he did it. He, he did it somehow. It he, you know, he figured it out. His brain was built to utilize it. Maybe I'm not sure, but I used it mostly to try to meet women. Okay. And you could make events, but. You know, it wasn't so crowded yet yeah. to where people were just numb to it. So you could actually, it still had some effectiveness because it wasn't so old hat, you know? Um, um, wow, these people are like, a, it's like, hey This everybody. reminds me of weddings in Jordan. I'm born in yeah, Jordan. Once. And in the Middle East, when people get married, they go out in convoys from the house to the church, and everybody's just like, beep, beep. like that's the whole way. Yeah. It's just like, actually, it's like it's a whole language there. Like here, I never use my horn. I remember one of my uncles bought a van, and a year later, he takes it to the Ford dealership to get it checked up. And they told him, oh, everything's good except your horn doesn't work. He's like, oh, really? He didn't know, like a whole year oh, wow. living in Michigan, he didn't have to use it. But back in the Middle East, like the horn is another language. You greet people like, hey, that means hello. Like you do mm -hmm. two quick ones. Um, they be like, fuck you. And yeah, you go. And that guy's like, hey man, I wasn't that far out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, yeah, but you know, it's a good it's good to use for like, hey, uh, someone's backing out, and you know they don't see you, so it's a little uh -uh. yeah, you know, round corner. Last time I was in town, I was in a Lyft or an Uber, and the guy, and it was gridlock traffic because it was like Thanksgiving post Thanksgiving day the big Thanksgiving parade here in Chicago Lake oh. Shore was a parking lot right and he just sat there and laid on his horn and I'm like I go and he didn't understand what I was saying to him I go because <laughs> a lot of people were honking and I go yeah like that's gonna help like that's gonna do anything and then he's like he must have thought I was saying hey you should be honking too like do it more <laughs> so he just laid on his horn there was nowhere to go yeah. And he just kept doing it. And I was like, I was getting so much anxiety. I was just starting to like, this ball of anxiety was just building inside of me. Wow. Kind of like one of those rubber band balls, you know? <laughs> and it started just, I felt like it was protruding out of my like chest. Because he just kept honking. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what. You're not resolving anything. You know what, I don't, and actually I'm just thinking of this. Maybe he doesn't expect it to do anything except express his frustration. Yeah, maybe. It's like two people screaming at you. But when I use a horn, I, I use it because I'm expecting results. I use tools to get results of some kind, right? So when I use a horn, it's I'm trying to affect a result of some kind, not just to express myself, like in a negative way. It's, yeah, it's, it's like a cathartic it's pretty wild, uh, yeah. release. Something. Yeah. Oh, what was it? Was that me? Yeah. Oh, it's probably. Oh, we went off the the beaten path. Um, yeah, but like I, we gotta go to like. But you know, so you're, I'm you're gonna a, head there once more. But you're a local, we'll, so uh, you know what you're doing. We'll rely on that. Yeah, uh, but I'm just gonna take you through like a quick detour here. This is where this is um, Dick Swing in town. What is it? Dick Swing in town. Oh, this like, is the, where, like, where all, all the clubs locals and stuff go. Is where you'd go. Uh, the meat market. So before I moved to uh, Chicago, like every time we're in Chicago, um, this is where we would hang out. China. What's going on over here, that guy? Lucky. Okay, he's just dancing. Um, 
This is dangerous. Yeah, we would come to these corners and actually try to score some, you know, shit and stuff. Oh, you can get you can get goods here. Yeah. What was your what was your shit? <laughs> um. Well, we would have weed on us, but we would come here and eat Mr. Eight Ball. Oh. And Eight Ball had like one. He was the real deal. This guy would be like in and out of jail. Everybody knew Eight Ball. You just come to that. There used to be a Dunkin' Donuts in one of these corners. You should go to the Dunkin' Donuts. And be like Eight Ball. Someone would be like, all right, hold on. And then we'll leave. Someone will do a call. Or I don't know. An Eight Ball comes out of nowhere. Be like, what you trying to grab? <laughs> And right there in the Dunkin' Donuts, I'm like, dude, like, should we go to some corner? It's like, no, no, this is good. I'm like, all right, if you say so. Yeah, there's some places that are so, I just can't, I can't get over it. Like, there's a, there's this after hours bar in uh, L.A. I can't remember the name. I have to have no, like, know the code word to get in. One of those stupid oh. bullshit kind of things. And uh, it, it's like, people are just, there's a drug dealer in the bar. And you just go to the back of the bar. He's there, just hanging out, uh, you know, and just selling drugs. Clearly, just selling drugs to people, and people are just doing drug, doing cocaine on the bar. Wow. It's like five in the morning. Like it, this seems to be a, a spot too, where like dudes come down to like show how tough they are. Yeah, or just kind of like, like try to look tough. This is definitely a place where you see fights all the time. We've been in fights a couple of times around here. Um, yeah. Like, me and my friends, we don't instigate stuff, but, like, you know, when someone attacks you and sometimes you got to make a point. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, th that was not my uh, drug of choice, though. I mean, that was, like, maybe a phase when you're out in Chicago getting drunk. Yeah. Like, ah, let's, you know. But uh, I'm more of, a, like, a weed, mushrooms. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I had a phase there for a few years where I was really into cocaine. But it wasn't for any good reason. I was it, just, it was never a good reason. To <laughs> yeah, there was never a good reason. Coke. Like, uh, I want to bring my curry yeah, to the next just, level. Yeah, this is like chaos down here. Yeah, we'll, we'll avoid it. I was going to... But it is, it's, it's an interesting little, like, intersection that just seems to be, like... I don't know why. Like, nothing happening. No one moving. It's just, like, the next block. Yeah, and this motherfucker. You got the red light, dude. Oh, he's going to... I'll sleaze him. Thank you. We had the... We had the green light, dog. Does it get crazy like this in LA? Yeah. You had the red light, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? Six, so much six, testosterone. Six. It's, uh, yeah, oh yeah. You, you smell it in the air here. Yeah, it's just palpable. Crazy, What's crazy. the, uh, what neighborhood is this? This is actually Gold Coast, which is like one of the, uh, like, richest neighborhoods in Chicago. Oh, really? Oh, this place looks like it's got a big line out front. Is that Mother's? That's Mother's 2. There's Mother's 1, that's Mother's 2. Mother's 2 is more popular than Mother's, I guess. Oh, okay. So you've got, and that's a bar or a performance space? It looks um, like a performance. It's got a marquee. No, it's, it's just a bar. This must be the problem. They do DJ and... Oh, 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 or it must be like a show or, or like... There's just people standing in the middle of the street. Like. <laughs> It's Saturday yeah. night in Chicago, baby. It's like old cops and stuff in front of us, but oh, they're it? not doing anything. I know. This is interesting. Uh, you know, the older I get, the more... That dude's got just a straight-up neck brace on. Like, and a sweet hat. Um, Until he gets the ladies, man. Yeah, and he's just they're walking across. Door. They're just wa No, I wonder how he got the neck brace. He just walked across a red light, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> without even looking. Uh... That's how you get a neck brace. Uh, that's how you get a second neck brace, I guess. Um, gosh, I mean, people are actually meeting each other and, and having conversations down here? Yeah, these are where the young... I mean, this is not my scene at all, but, yeah, the young kids, I mean, this is what they do. They come here, they get drunk, they spit game, and they go home, and they fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, probably half of them met on Tinder. Oh, yeah. This is the spot, huh? The Tinder spot. Come down here and meet it. Meet me at Mother's. It's just a cheap shots and. I want to make you a mother. What's she saying? Shenanigans? Yeah, and the cops uh, are just like having. Hanging they're out. having a good time, man. They're just like standing. Just smoking. sitting around smoking. Thing is east. Just looking at legs. 
I mean, you can't blame them. Those legs are hard not to look at, I guess, to a certain degree. But, you know, there's mothers too. Oh, okay, so mothers and mothers too. Mothers. Okay. This dude. Just people walking around. This feels like New Orleans right here. Really? This, this section of two blocks that we've been on feels like New Orleans. Like, it just feels like anarchy. It's, <laughs> it's like, you're like so close to anarchy. You get here like at 9, 10, it's, nah, it's not that crazy. Yeah. About one, you know, past what time midnight. is it, 1.15, yeah. Let me make sure. Uh, when the wicked come up. Let Mike know I'm on, I'm on my way back to his place. Uh... Yeah, the, uh, yeah, just anarchy. Like, it's got, like, down in New Orleans, you can just feel like, I mean, it's, oh, chaos yeah. is about ready to, and now it's, it's just, like, just, two blocks, and then, now like, it's like, and now these it's are, like, a million family. dollar, yeah, Meet these are, like, the million bar. dollar hometowns, and, yeah, <laughs> meet a girl at the bar, start, and then get her, you know, then you just have, you start a family here, and this is where you raise your kids. <laughs> these are fucking, these are nice-ass buildings. Uh, like, Frank Sinatra used to live, like, a couple blocks oh, to really? the left there, and Marilyn Monroe used to have, like, a bar she would frequent around here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is where... Uh, the glory days of this neighborhood. Yeah. Although, I mean, other people would argue that the glory days are just now beginning, I guess. I mean, these places are fucking nice. Oh, and this is Lakeshore. So that's Lakeshore. Right in front about of the get on it. Yeah, yeah. The, uh... Oh, okay. I do like this city. There's so many different things happening. There's so many different kind of, like, distinct neighborhoods here. I guess any major city has that. Mm -hmm. But this one feels like they all kind of bleed into each other to a certain degree, too. It's a little bit cleaner, more organized. And maybe the, compared to New York. And the public transit system here is much better than it's Los very Angeles. Easy. Yeah, when I moved here, like, and after my second week, like, I knew how to get around taking buses. And yeah. This is a magnificent mile. The shopping center. Or some buggy. Big ass mall. Is that what that is? Yeah. It's got stores and shops and stuff. It's all just malls. So. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, okay. Come down here and spend a lot of money. Oh, yeah, there's that Best Buy. <laughs> I mean, and I wish there was a Best Buy. I mean, it's like that was open 24 hours. Right. You know what I mean? They need to. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that is big. That's the second tallest building in Chicago, the Hancock. What's building. the one, Sears Tower? Sears, yeah. Um, Just now, like, someone else bought it, named Willis, renamed it, but nobody calls it Willis. What, the Sears Tower? Yeah. yeah. People still call it Sears Tower. Oh, they they named it. Someone oh, I renamed the Sears Tower Willis. Like, they actually thought they. Like, what you talking people about? People would Willis? start doing They yeah. thought people would start doing that. They didn't catch them. Oh, I guess it's Willis now. Although, 50 years from now, you know, 20 years from now, People will be like, oh, you mean Willis? <laughs> you know, because no one will know what the Sears Tower right, is. Right, it'll be like so uh, irrelevant by then. Or yeah, and then also like, you know, people will die off who knew it as the Sears Tower. Yeah, everybody who knew the Sears Tower is Willis dead. Is dead. So eventually point. it will be Willis, but... Um, I mean, in 100 years from now, everybody that's alive is going to be dead. Yes, that, that gives me like, you know, except for a very small percentage of us. And that's what makes me really realize that, you know... You need to really do, like, stop worrying about what other people think. They're all going to be dead. Yeah. You know? And also people will just worry about, like, material possessions and stuff. Like, yeah, in 100 years, you're, you're going to be gone. That yeah. doesn't, like, what impact are you going to leave? I mean, hell, I really want a Subaru Outback. <laughs> but guess what? After having a Subaru Outback for three months, I'd probably be over it. But I still really want one. Yeah. But at the same time, like, it's just all gone. It's just all done. Like, right. it doesn't, none of it matters. It's about what you leave behind. Yeah, 100 years from now, everyone you know will be dead. So, do what you want, who cares what they think. That's a good way to, like, really think about it. I mean, I wish I was a teenager who grew up in Chicago just making out on the lake during the summer. What a great summer that yeah. would have been on the beach. Today was crazy on the beach. This came out, it was like 92. I got a quick, uh, a quick, I got a quick peek, a quick. Quick a peek. quick peek in at the beach yesterday, early, for like five minutes. I got to, because Mike lives two blocks from it. Okay, yeah. So I ran over there real quick, peeked at it. Good time. And then, uh, so I got to at least about, see it yeah. this time. Because um, uh, Tuesday would have been great to do it, but it was cold. I wasn't going to go swimming. It was like 60. Yeah, was it like raining? Or? 
Oh, oh yeah, no, yeah, it was raining out there, whatever, whatever day it was, it was yeah, just raining all day. It was like two days, it was just raining. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Today was like 92, tomorrow's going to be 67. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's yeah. bipolar out here. Yeah, it's wild. Like, getting rid of winter here is, it takes a little bit. It's yeah, like shake up it with off. a girlfriend. It's like, ah, eh, it's going to take... Yeah, every once in a while you, you, do a, you do a double back and yeah. Just for one last. And then it gets like really hot and you get yeah, like you a do. cool day and you're like, oh, I missed this. Like, hey, welcome. Like, and then you're like, oh, no, it's bad. Like, yeah. I'm sick of you. And I but already it, put away my fucking winter sweaters. <laughs> you know, I got to get those back out now. Yeah, I, I did that like twice this year. You put them away like, we're done. It's spring. And then like, nope, I guess not. It's been unreasonably cool in Los Angeles. Like, whenever I've been home, it hasn't been good. Yeah, my brother lives in Huntington Beach. I called him today. I was like, man, it's 92. Like, what, what are you doing there? I'm like, oh, it's in the 70s. It's all right. I'm like, know, really? I'm like, why don't you come down here for a vacation? For a summer vacation? Yeah, come right. to Chicago. Get some heat. That just shows you how spoiled we are. Like, it's in the 70s. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd be that guy, but I am that guy. Like, maybe I'm a lizard, but, like, it needs, like, when it's 90, I'm loving it. Yeah. Like, I love, I love, the hotter the better. 90s, good. yeah. I grew up in the Middle East. I was born in Jordan and grew up in Dubai. So I'm used to desert weather. My first time seeing snow, I was 18 when I moved to Detroit after high school. Oh, that and was And the first time, I was like, like, some stuff was coming down from the sky. And I was driving with my uncle. I'm like, what, what is that? In my head, I'm like, ah, it's not, it's white, but like, it's not snow. I was like, that's snow. I'm like, really? Because in my head, like every cartoon I've seen, you see like balls of snow coming down. Oh, so yeah, I'm yeah. waiting for like a ball of snow just to start, you know, like, like hail coming down. But no, I guess it comes in the form of flakes. Yeah, yeah. And every once in a while, you'll, if you hit a real good storm, the snowflakes are huge. They're mm -hmm. not balls, like giant balls, but like... Sometimes the snowflakes are like the size of quarters. Yeah. You know, like if you get a good storm and like. Yeah, you grew up in Ohio. You're, you're, yeah, you're yeah. familiar with your. Uh, all kinds snow. of snow. Yeah, snow all the time. And then like, you know, it's the same that idea that Midwest thing is like winter lasts six months. You get a month of spring, three months of summer, and then you know, what's what four plus six? So now you know you got two months of fall. And then six months of winter. It's like you could get snow in May. It's just like, ugh, why would you? Yeah, like really? You know, it was always, February was always the worst and the coldest. Mm. It seemed like to me. It always felt like around Valentine's Day was like for multiple reasons. It's like a day you should not believe you have. Like, oh man, this is the worst day. So cold. So cold. Babe, it's really cold. And then you get this weird four or five day stretch in like the end of February where it'd be like 60 and then it'd go back to like get a little hope yeah negative three degrees or something <laughs> and like another snowstorm ice and snowstorm and then you get another two months of winter and you're just like oh I don't feel like being a person anymore you know I'm just uh, yeah just over it when it gets so cold like I, that's why I moved to LA instead of New York because mm. of winter. Yeah. I like being warm. I hate the winter. For sure. Um, People always say it's easier to be homeless in L.A. than New York. But, you know, you can't go into it with that kind of attitude. Like, I'm not going to fail so miserably I'm on the street where it's warm as opposed to snow. But, like, at least. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. But I think different parts of the country will ship their... They do this weird thing. Like, some cities were doing this thing where they were buying bus tickets for their homeless people to different cities. They just send them to a different city? Yeah, I think a lot of cities were sending them to Portland. You know what? The most interesting homeless people you'll find in Denver. I haven't been to Denver. I'm going there a couple weeks. I haven't been there in a while, but... Like, but uh, yeah. I was there last August, and, um... I mean, you see them, you're not sure, like, is this guy homeless? Like, I don't know. They're dressed like hipsters, dreadlocks, long hair... And I don't know, first when I saw them, I thought, okay, maybe somebody's on a road trip to Burning Man, and they just ran out of money in Denver, like halfway, and they're just trying to, you know, find a ride to the desert. That's a fascinating culture. The Burning Man has its own, like, culture. You ever been culture. there? No, I've never been there, but there's, like, people who, like, I didn't even realize there's a year-round Burning Man culture. Yeah. Oh, like, year-round, like, not just uh, Yeah, it's a year-round thing where these people... They, they like squat they find they like they live in these communes that they squat in and it's all it's 
I, I, I don't so know like, what yeah, it is, but like, and like, I knew a girl. I know the girl who. Who is she? Oh, her dad like started Burning Man. Oh, why can't I remember who this is? This is. Mm. It's crazy. That I can't remember who this I, is. I don't remember. The, I've heard like the, um, Moshe Kasher has a podcast uh, called Hound Told Discussion. Like he every month he has like he talks about the history of something and. They're discussing Burning Man. And how oh it yeah, he's he's done Burning Man for years. He goes to it a bunch. Yeah, like every year or something. Yeah. It's interesting because he's one of these sober guys who goes and does it. Yeah. So like he's been sober yeah, since he was eleven. Yeah. So there's sober people who go. There's um, there's people obviously who are doing lots of psychedelic drugs. From what I understand, there's also like people who are just there to have fun. But not in such a hardcore way, either way. Yeah, just check out the arts and yeah. the music. It would be interesting. I would really want to go check it out. Yeah, it would be interesting. I wonder yeah, if it's nice still. Experience. I wonder if it's still going good, as far as like. I wonder if it's been. It's, if it's jumped the shark. People yet, have been or, going there for this. years. They'll tell you, oh, it's changed. It's not the same. Yeah. But you get that with everything. Yeah. That's true. When more people find out about something, it kind of loses its novelty. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess there'll always be that. Like, I knew this band before they were popular. Yeah, I was just about to get into that. Yeah, like, art, you feel that with a lot of artists. Like, when they're underground, people love them. Once they get popular, like, eh. You yeah, don't the listen to them. People who love them want them to be successful. For sure. Too. They don't want them just to, their favorite artists to struggle to survive. Mm. At least you wouldn't think they'd want that. Yeah, I mean, you want them to be happy so you can make keep doing what they're doing I mean I consider myself to be underground in the in the sense that like mainstream I'm not a mainstream uh, like you couldn't just walk into a mall mm. and say do you know who Ryan Singer is and you know half the people would be like yeah you mm. know I think that's a good indication of mainstream you go to a mall you just uh, 50% of the people Americana. I heard your name probably yeah. right um so in that sense, I think I'm. Uh, oh yeah, this is. I think. I think if we get into the left, one one left. lane over. Yeah. Did you say it's Sheridan or are we turning? Yeah, yeah, it's Sheridan. What we'll do is Sheridan will. We'll stay uh, in this lane. Right. We'll stay in this lane to go right. Okay. Because then we end up taking a left. We're gonna make a, little, a left. Okay. A little further down. Perfect. Do you remember you have a mental map? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, so you've been in Chicago since Monday, right? Yeah, I got in, well, when did I get into town? Really late, early Monday, I guess, or so. Okay. Yeah, excuse me, really late Sunday. Uh, so, like, Monday morning. And you've been working, like, every day. Yeah, You're like and then, a, like, a Monday hustler. did a show. Monday night had a show. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, I was just working on a bunch of stuff, like, so I didn't really go out. Yeah. I was just kind of in a video editing hole. And then, um. Uh, Thursday we had the show at the club and then Friday more work more editing and stuff and then um, Saturday man today I've been going at it all day because we did that fun thing this morning this afternoon and then straight to the club from there yeah so um, yeah and pizza delivers pretty late here too oh what street is this Thorndale is that Thorndale. did you say Thorndale that kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, that's probably read. that's probably that probably works. Let me see. Oh yeah. Or wait. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because then it's boom, boom. Then it's just left, left. Okay. Yeah, I'm like his building's like right over there. Perfect. Perfect. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, it's a pleasure, man. Uh, like this is weird, you know. Like I, have, you know, I used to listen to you, and you know, I'm like listening to you, but like <laughs> not on Spotify or YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so I think it's like two streets up, right? Is Winthrop probably the next one? Uh, yeah, because this is Kenmore. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, this was a fun weekend. I'm glad it worked oh, out. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Uh, yeah. Good to have you all the time. You know, I'll be back, it sounds like. Yeah, so left here. Um. Yeah, you know, hopefully I'll be back. And if not, uh, you know, because before it was like, oh, we'll bring you every six months, but like, they might be spacing it out more. With that, so it might be like, a, yeah, well, it might be like a twelve-month thing. Oh. I think, because that's typical, though, once a year maybe. But uh, 
but if not, I'm sure I'll be in Chicago uh, before then. Uh, you know, anyway, just because there's always something happening here that's fun. I didn't, you know, these bicycles are so quiet. There's a bike lane right to our right. Um, isn't that what that is? No, that's what it should be for, yeah. And but he's going on our left, like a, oh. Rebel. We passed no, it. a little further, actually. I'm going to sign out. Um, check out Ryan Singer, everyone. Check out his podcast, um, Me and Paranormal You. Because it's more fun to believe. It's more fun to believe, dude. It is. I love that saying. We're robots. We're all robots, it turns robots, out. Maybe. Man. Possibly. Just saying it's possible. Boom, right here. These are the buildings. Yeah, dude. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Well, 